Naboo is a saturated planet orbiting deep inside the Naboo system. Water covers 50% of the planet's surface and also penetrates throughout the planet's interior in honeycomb-like networks of subterranean rivers, channels, and oceans. In fact, it is possible to travel through the planet's core entirely in channels of water. Thede is a city located in the northwestern quadrant of the planet, it is the capital of Naboo and is one of the most beautiful places in the galaxy. Gentle rolling hills, lush green meadows that become seasonal carpets of profuse wildflowers, verdant forests, babbling brooks, and deep blue skies characterize this region. The environment is moderate. Though predation does exist, the abundance and comfort of the landscape temper violent competition for survival. Each species appears to live with the others with an instinctive understanding of its place in the cycle of life. Shocks are known for their succulent meat, and their hides make excellent leather. Domesticated for generations, they have extremely simple minds. Wild shock isn't as bulbous as domesticated shock. Females are continuously pregnant. Unique compartmentized uterine system allows for impregnation by different males at the same time. Shocks love to swallow in mud banks but often get caught in river currents. Fatty ambergris makes shocks extremely buoyant. Used as a base for perfumes. Regal in disposition, confident in nature, strong, swift, and smart, tusk cat have long-range eyesight and an acute sense of smell. It can be domesticated for shock management and other tasks. Tusks for display and defensive purposes. They can pierce hides when hunting. Tusk cat are swift runners, distinctive, stiff-legged, galloping gait propels them easily through the many grasslands and forests of Naboo. Elegant long tails balance their bodies at high speeds. Tusk cats mate for life and live in small family groups or prides, which usually consist of the mated pair and their offspring. Young males leave the pride upon maturity and head off to find a mate. Males find their partner through a process of scenting. Tusk cats are natural shepherds. Each tusk cat pride gathers its own herd of shocks and guards them, killing one or two every seven or eight days for food. Gualamas are swift and elegant herbivores that feed on wild grasses and flowers. Normally, they live together in herds of up to 25 members. Herds center around a single male that cares for and protects females and young. When a male colt reaches maturity, the patriarch of the herd runs him off. The young male roams the countryside with other bachelors, who look for mates and wrestle with each other. A royal herd exists for the exclusive use of the queen and her handmaidens. This herd is reverently guarded by tusk cats. The most royal of beasts, ridden by monarchy only, domesticated Gwarlaras are sacred animals, revered on Naboo and memorialized in Tekt and theology. The queen has a private royal herd to assure bloodlines. Gwarlaras can live up to a hundred years. They are related to Gwalamas, but are much more massive. These beats originated in the colder, snowier climates of Naboo. Their hair is very long and shaggy in winter. Frequently, their underfur is shorn and used for tapestries. Young are born white and gradually darken with age. Mature guarlaras are deep dark. Carnivorous, mammalian falconoids that prey on plain-dwelling avians, small rodents and waterfowl. Females give birth once of twice a year and serve as sole caretakers of the young. Typical litters are three to four young, with maturity occurring at approximately four months. Males stake out territories in the spring and mate with any willing females that pass through. Keen eyesight, precision flying and extraordinary diving speed make them favorites for sporting and hunting parties. Twirls have long been used by Naboyan aristocracy. The twirl can handle prey surpassing its own size by 10%. Their diet is supplemented by berries gra Gracers, carnivorous, four-legged primates, have long been used by the Naboo in hunts and birding parties. Wild gracers hunt in packs ranging from two to one individuals. Their main prey are rodents, shocks and carrion. They hunt more by sight than smell. There are several varieties of domesticated graysor, subtail, bounder, and manadept being most common. Domesticated gracers are usually kenneled, it is unwise to keep gracers and twirls together. Females give birth to one offspring at a time, burrowing with them until they are mature at four to six weeks. Diminutive carnivores they eat small rodents, insects, lizards, vorpax are much beloved by Naboyan ladies. 
Despite their beguiling appearance, they are brave, loyal, and can be quite fierce when provoked or frightened. They possess a full set of needle-sharp teeth. In the wild, they live in small colonies that dot the craggy rock outcroppings of the hill country. They are most active during twilight hours prowling for water and prey. Vorparks emit a soothing, cooing purr, which rises to a hum when alarmed. They rest with legs tucked under body to conserve heat. Fur is extremely soft. Vorpaks come into heat once a year. They produce litters of three to five pups. Due to the Vorpak's light weight, its bone structure can support eight legs with no problem. For centuries, noble women and aristocracy of Naboo have kept Vorpaks as mascots and pets, carrying them about in their pockets and sleeves. They make excellent hand warmer in the winter. Their pleasant scent is also a much admired quality. The abyss is the general name used for the labyrinthian system of seas and waterways that begin on Naboo's surface and permeate its core. Though much of the water is placid and cool, there are dangerous pocket currents created when fiery blasts from the planet's core heat the water to high temperatures. Extreme caution must be used when traveling in the honeycomb-like passageways of the inner planet. One can easily get lost, or consumed by any number of creatures. The following scenes were captured only because the artist offered to paint the portraits of key Gungan officials, resulting in the loan of a sturdy underwater taxi and a courageous navigator. There are multitudes of creatures that have adapted quite well to this marvelous place. Many species have bioluminescent patterns or patches on their skin, which help them identify themselves to others, locomote in the dark, and attract prey. Others have sophisticated ocular abilities to help them illuminate the darkness. Most are cold-blooded or have developed surface area to body mass ratios that allow them to preserve heat and ration energy. It is doubtful that we have discovered even half of the incredible species that live in this dark, forbidding terrain, and one hopes for more research in the near future. With its long snout and short, sharp teeth, has adapted to eating yob shrimp. The large, rotund tea are voracious known to swallow individual Gungans outside the safer region of the abyss. They generally move quite slowly but are capable of quick burst of speed when chasing prey. They are parasitized by Yob Shrimp, which inhabit their gills, they therefore do not harm law, which pick out the Yob Shrimp. The most plentiful of all, live in schools of thousands. Daggerts provide food for many underwater predators. Seas are thin, lengthy fish. Its stomach can expand to accommodate several prey, including those as large as itself. Rays are swift swimming, fairly large fish. Found in the abyss, but favor open waters and surface oceans. Considered a sport fish by Gungans. Its crescent-shaped caudal fin are good for fast swimming and spectacular leaping. FAA have stiff, armored and narrow girth, which allow them to inhabit slot crevices. The OPEEC killer is a large, deep-dwelling zoological curiosity, part fish and part crustacean. Its flexible, armor-like exoskeleton provides both protection and a reactive fulcrum for striking. Claws are used mainly for self-propulsion. Also used to crawl across craggy floors or between rocks. Double dentition for impaling prey and shredding, also, in males, for the protection of eggs. OP of each sex emit bubbles scented with pheromones. This excites both fish to begin an unusual but quite beautiful fin dance. OP are mouth breeders. The female lays her eggs near a male who immediately fertilizes them, then scoops them up into his mouth for safekeeping. The male holds the eggs for three months. He refrains from eating during this period, living off stored fat. It's suddenly jostle, he may swallow a few egg, which can only assuage what must be a fierce hunger during this period of abstinence. The hatched young are immediately capable of living and hunting on their own. They are known to swim back into their father's mouth for occasional protection. Long, sticky tongue, about three times its body length, can sweep up entire schools of prey at once. The colo claw fish is the abyss second largest predator. A huge, eel-like fish with incredible scissor hinge snapping jaws and giant foreclaws that help snatch, hold and crush prey. The colo's intimidating body is illuminated with natural phosphorescence. Other creatures flee in fear when they see it approaching. The colo's underside is comprised of many fins that help it propel at quick, snake-like speeds. Dwells in underwater caverns and tunnels. 
female lays numerous eggs in a burrow she shares with her mate. She must chase male off before the young hatch of the male colo will devour them. Colo young are extremely vulnerable when born, and many are eaten before maturity by various predators, like T. Stomach expands to accommodate tremendous amounts of food. After such a meal, the colo doesn't need to eat for several months and hibernates in its tunnels. Temporomandibular claws help push prey down gullet. Indiscriminately voracious, colos have been known to swallow OPEE hatchlings alive, which chew their way out of the clawfish, killing it. The most feared and mysterious of all Naboyant creatures, legendary to the point of being mythical, this aquatic mammal patrols both the subterranean seas of the inner planet and the larger open oceans of the surface. Males can grow to over 200 meters, females at least 150 meters. During a sinuous mating dance, they emit purring noises. Each female has a single yug per birth, which nurses up to one year. Due to Gungan engineers' defense shields, Sandos bypass Gungan cities. They have been reported to breach the swamp surface to attack and decimate entire herds of unsuspecting fambas and falumposets. Although gilled, the sando may possess lungs as well, unsubstantiated reports of one seen resting on a sandbar above water. This mammal rests 90% of the time on underwater cut croppings while digesting, expending as little energy as possible. Graceful and feline in nature, it hunts by stealth and surprise. It uses its gargantuan, flucked tail to strike without warning and then vanishes just as quickly. Eyesight is keen, claws and teeth are razor sharp. A huge and seemingly endless place, the Gungan Swamp stretches across much of the surface of Naboo. Home of the Gungan species that gave it its name, the swamplands, tidal basins, inland seas, sloughs, rivers, grasslands, ponds, lakes and even lone mountains, cliffs and crags. Its fauna is extremely diverse with a very large number of species, most of which have yet to be officially identified. Though much of the swamp is quite a distance from the equator, it is generally hot and humid, sticky and bug-infested. The Gungan Swamp is complicated to navigate, for the channels and waterways are constantly changing, forming and reforming, giving one the impression that the surroundings are alive and perpetually trying to swallow you up. Falumposets are large herbivores that roam the swamps in family groups containing one bull and four to seven cows and their young. Long, stilt-like legs are excellent for wading. They are also excellent swimmers. Wild falumposets have shaggy fetlocks to protect against nipping and yorks. Tallish mammal with long, telescopic legs for fast locomotion, the Icopi is less a swimmer than a runner and swift forder of swamps. Most commonly seen in herds prancing across the wetlands. They have short necks, possibly for defensive purposes. They compensate with long, tube-like tongues, about two to three times their head length, to reach and grasp food high above and to drink water below knees. The tongue is hollow for sucking water of nectar like a straw. Terrazods are large, friendly, semi-aquatic mammals that graze along swamp bottoms and nap upon moist sandbanks. Mots are medium-sized, semi-aquatic herbivores, about one meter at the shoulder, that dwell in underground mudbank burrows. They eat a wide variety of vegetation and are a primary source of food for most swamp predators, even Gungans occasionally kill mots. Fortunately, mots have a high reproduction rate, about 15 young per birth. Mots live in communes of up to 15 adults. Communes usually consist of a dominant male and, perhaps, one lieutenant that guard the females and young. Threat display to determine dominance is exhibited by both sexes. Very good swimmers, young often hitch rides on an adult's back. Pico Picos are large, strong reptavians whose great raucous squawks carry over long distance. Can congregate in flocks but generally travel in pairs and mate for life. Male and female are the same size. Beautiful indigo sapphire plumage can be seen on both sexes. Skin is fairly toxic. 
Most animals leave Pico Picos alone as toxins cause sharp stomach pains, vomiting, and occasional deaths. Not all animals are susceptible, however. Powerful beak crushes the hardest of nuts. Also eats kadu eggs. And small creatures. Certain nuts and seeds will not germinate unless they pass through the Pico Pico's gastrointestinal system. Skilled mimics, they imitate perfectly the sounds of many other animals. Easily taught to talk in captivity, they are a favorite pet of both Gungans and Naboo. They nest in the high hollows of trees. Female lays two eggs at a time. Both partners care for hatchlings. Fast-moving, flightless reptavians, Picobus specialize in fishing and probing through the mud for small prey. Waders and runners, they can cover long distances quickly both in and out of the water. Long, pointed beaks lined with sharp teeth are used to spear and hold onto slippery prey. It uses large, webbed feet to create shadowy areas, which attract fish and then swallows prey live in on gulp. Can shed tail when attacked. Tail grows back quickly, sometimes forked. Amazing regenerative powers. Scientists are studying the Picobus for medical purposes. Travel in pairs of groups of five to six. They lay eggs in sand. Young can walk and swim upon birth. Bulky, loose-skinned amphibians, gullipuds puff up and extend their spines to make themselves harder to catch in swallows. Actually bounce when inflated. Gungans use excited gullipuds to play gullaball. Also known as the swamp turkey, the nuna is a common, flightless reptavian that's highly fecund. Species include the common nuna and the dwarf nuna. Native to the swamps of Naboo, nunas have been exported all around the galaxy for use as pets, meat, egg layers or curiosities. Legendary for their stupidity and curiosity, have been known to wander onto and accidentally stow away on visiting spacecraft. Male displays aggression with inflated waddles and hissing. Clawed feet scratch in an underbrush. Nunas are mainly vegetation but will eat small invertebrates and worms. Female lays one huge egg, a near miraculous accomplishment. This egg contains up to 10 developing chicks. Outer temperature seems to influence sexual determination of the eggs. Nunas are heavily preyed upon but flourish due to their fast running, ability to adapt, disease resistance and sheer fruitfulness. This large, flightless reptavian has ungainly, awkward movements but is renowned for its speed and agility. In the wild, Kadu Traven in large, sexually segregated flocks, 20 to 100 individuals. Flocks come together during mating, at which time the male become more colorful. Often domesticated, Kadu are the primary riding beast of the Gungans. Gungans raise Kadu from the egg, creating a lifelong bond. Kadu are kept in underwater stables attached to bubble city shells. Kadu are also excellent swimmers. Their shape streamlines in the water for effective diving. Large lung capacity allows for long periods without breathing, over two hours. Kadu eat snails, to leechweed and aquatic plants. They have no upper incisors and must tear at plants. Females make elevated mud nests, which they line with vegetable matter. They usually lay 10 to 12 eggs at a time. The largest terrestrial herbivores of the swamp, fambas are technically amphibians but have the scaly hide typical of reptiles. Fambas easily knock over trees to get at leaves and berries. They also forage for underwater plants. Fambas in the wild travel in herds of up to 12. They are born with moist skin and gills, upon maturity, gills disappear and skin hardens. The famba has been domesticated by the Gungans for millennia as beasts of burden and cavalry artillery draft beasts. The main breeding herds are so large they are traditionally swamp pastured in sacred areas. When food supplies or environment change, deprivation may occur and species may invade or destroy other species' niches. Powerful, thick-necked herbivores, harumphs get their name from the loud, deep, guttural sounds they make. Not choosy about food, sharp beak for nipping through tough zosia grass and the barks of Heidenach. Four long horns are for defense and the protection of two long sensitive ears. Quite nearsighted and with an irritable temperament, harumphs never hesitate to charge. Female harumphs give birth to one calf at a time. Herds defend young by encircling them and facing outward like a shield. Harumphs are quite large, about 3 to 4 meters at the shoulder. It is a surprisingly good leaper despite its bulk. 
Swamp herbivores that share a niche with the Terrazod, Mutabak prefer the muddy woodlands, but are also found in the shallows nibbling Mintri and Wuxia plant. Like many swamp dwellers, the Mutabak has a streamlined shape for swimming, as it must frequently cross waterways from pasture to pasture. It does not dive. During mating season, stags trumpet and roar to attract females. Stags form harems, which they defend against other males. Males' health declines after mating, making them more susceptible to predators. Claws dig up. Olipoms are aquatic rodents that live on the surface of swamps benign and gentle. Short, dense, green fur is camoufled to blend in with palms, whose edges they feed upon. Long, bloom-like tendrils grow from their head follicles to mimic palm blossoms. When palms bloom, so do sympathetic olipom hair blossoms. A small, graceful, dainty herbivore. Very light with slight, porous bones. The wide feet of the palm hopper enable it to leap among and balance on large palm petals. Palm hoppers sleep or hide dangling underwater. They breath through their tube-like nostrils. Small, cute, hopping rodent with a high reproductive rate. Tooks feed on swamp nuts and berries. Eight young per litter. Fully independent and fertile at two weeks. Took trap plants are a common enemy, their fragrance is identical to took making pheromones and, therefore, irresistible. However, tooks have fast reflexes and can often escape at the last moment with an instinctual, defensive backflip. A hard-shelled, benign, slow-moving reptile, a shiro's main defense is to retract into its spiny shell. Feeds on roots and occasional mud-dwelling crustaceans and mollusks. Shiro is popular with Gungan cooks. Shiros roll in mud and collect dirt and seeds between shell ridges. Took traps grow and flourish in these soil pockets creating symbiotic Shiro traps. Took traps provide camouflage for Shiros and Shiros provide locomotion for Took traps. Main predators is the saw-toothed grank, which can break through shell with its large, crushing jaws. Fast breeding, dim-witted, voracious herbivores, clodhoppers use their powerful forelegs to forage and hop. Zalaakas are very swift, intelligent and fierce omnivores. Rather little is known about their habits. They seem to dwell primarily in woody uplands, yet are strong swimmers. Narglatches will not attack adult Zalaakas by Zalaakas will attack and eat Narglatches. Displays dimorphic coloration, with males having a blue-yellow hide, females a dappled blue. A Gungan rite of passage is to capture a foal with the intent of training it as a cavalry mount, extremely dangerous, not often successful. Not much known about breeding habits. Conjectured that Zalakas live in family groups of one male to between one and four females and young, and that the female gives birth to one offspring every ten years. Shaupouts are carnivorous, arboreal marsupials that hang upside down from swamp tree branches, catching avians with their long, hooked talons most active at dusk and twilight. Female gives birth to more young than she has milk for. The weaker die. Young take refuge in mother's pouch until they get older, then they venture out onto mother's stomach and back. A small, playful, mammalian predator, the otta hunt fish, olipoms, tooks and palm hoppers. Love to crack open and yorks with rocks on its chest. Always in motion, these swift water creatures outswim their predators and nearly always catch their prey. Ata are curious, intelligent and playful. Burrow in mudbanks and live together in loosely organized groups or clans. Flexible spine for limber movement in and out of water. Veermocks are large, ferocious primates that live around the fringes of the swamp and woodlands hunting prey through stealth and surprise. They avoid deep water as they are weak swimmers. Unique bounding movement takes advantage of powerful upper torso and shoulder rotation along with lengthy, strong arms. Females mate once a year, building nests on the ground in a bed of leaves and branches. The Veermok's pregnancy term is three months. They usually give birth to twins, whom they immediately abandon, unlike the more nurturing ranker. Forced to look out for themselves, these twins mature quickly. Generally solitary unless mating, they are semi-territorial, usually but not always defending turf from other Veermok's. Fur on back and chest provides protection and insulation. Their pair rises on back when alarmed or angered. Hairless lower anatomy allows for easy hygiene. 
the narglatch, the stealthy alpha predator of the swamp. A solitary hunter that silently stalks and quickly demolishes its prey, prefers kadu and jimvu. Generally avoids deep water, although a good swimmer if pressed. Sexual dimorphism in coat, male has additional fleshy spikes, while females are more smooth. Males and females only commingle during mating. Females are fiercer hunters to males, but males will chase a female from her kill. Pregnant female gives birth to twins, always a male and a female. Since young can hunt immediately upon birth, mothers abandon them. Cubs hunt together until maturity, making themselves less vulnerable to Granks and Veermocks. After a couple of years, cubs separate. Blarths are medium-sized predators that feed primarily on small animals and shellfish they can easily subdue. Amiable and easily tamed, they have been kept as household pets and watch animals by Gungans since prehistoric times. Rich blubber is buoyant and insulating, allowing blarths to stay underwater for up to two hours. Skin also absorbs oxygen from water. Long prehensile tail aids in swimming and is used in fishing for prey. Blarths swallow prey whole. Saliva aids shell decomposition. Blarths are named for the low burping sound they make. At 8 to 10 meters long, AIWHA superficially resemble Alderon thrantis. Flying cetaceans, they use their wide wings and powerful pectoral muscles to gracefully propel themselves both under the water and in the air. They live in medium-sized pods and feed generally on surface-dwelling krill, daggerts and other fishes. The AIWHA fishes with both its jaws and a filter-like baleen. It uses high-pitched underwater sounds to corral fish. Able to launch themselves out of the water and directly into the air, they can fly vast distances in search of prey. When flying, it emits high whistling sound. Internal sonar and radar capabilities, sonar for underwater navigation and radar for night flying. Another near legendary creature, the Titavian is a huge reptavian that perches on mountains and crags at the remote edges of oceans and swamps. Little is known about it, but much rumored. Assumed to eat carrion since large sea creature and animal bones abound around abandoned perches. Also assumed to lay eggs, though no one has seen a nest or young. These giant reptavians are notable for their expansive arms and powerful pectoral muscles, which are necessary to power their enormous wings. As a result of their bulk, sustained flight is impossible. They have been known to take floating sea journeys. Titavians perch on cliffs and crags for defensive purposes, but also because, since they cannot lift off from THR ground, they need to fall from a high place to catch flight. Once grounded, they are vulnerable to attack and must crawl back up to their perch to find safety and prepare for flight again. 